Hey, uh, you know, team win last week. Uh, happy with the way our guys played. And uh, I think, you know, this Cleveland defense proposes a, a great challenge for us. So it's going to take uh, take everything we got to get ready to go play these guys. And we're, uh, we're knee deep in preparation and just focused on the task at hand. So any questions? What did you notice from their pass rush, Cleveland's? <laughs> I think they're a very good pass rush. Um, <laughs> it flies off the tape, you know. They're they're up the field and uh, they're disrupting plays, and uh, we have our definitely have a big challenge to get ready to, to go get these guys blocked. I mean, nine sacks is absurd. Some of that just a product of a rookie quarterback going against Pro Bowl guys and the speed of that, and I don't know a new offense getting used to that. Yeah, you know, I, I don't I don't know. I just know that uh, you know they have they have a lot of talent. Um, can't speak to Chicago, but I know that. Um, these guys are capable of wrecking games, you know. So we have to, we have to, you know, be great in our detail, and uh, we got to be able to run the football. So we're not in those those situations so much. It's particularly tough for Bradbury when he calls out the protections. And I guess how do you prepare someone who's doing a good job, but also going against pass rush like that from Cleveland? Uh, you talk about how to prepare Garrett for calling out protections. Yeah, especially Cleveland after they've coming off nine sacks. Here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, just stick to our fundamentals and things we've been doing all off season. That's what's got us where we're at. Um, and Garrett's up for the challenge. He's a he's leader of that front, getting us all on the same page and uh, really pleased with his season thus far. And um, he know, we know he can get a lot better too. But we can all get better, me included. So uh, that's what's, this today is so important and tomorrow, just uh, you know, having a good Thursday so we can have a good Friday and preparing Friday so we can have a great day Sunday. So just, uh, one step at a time, little details, focusing on third down today. Hey, Clint, with your friendship with Kevin, just what's it going to be like just being on opposite <laughs> sidelines there and leading your offenses? Yeah, um, you know, got a lot of respect for Kevin, uh, close to him, but just want to make this week as much about our guys as we can, you know. Um, it'll be good to see him, but, you know, it's the players, it's our guys that are going out and battling. Um, right now it's, it's the coach's time in preparation, but Sunday is for the players, so just trying to get our guys ready to go to, to have some success. Well, if I could ask about your relationships, what did you, what did he mean just to kind of your up and coming, getting, you know, helping you kind of come into here in Minnesota and your first NFL job and that kind of stuff? Yeah, there's, uh, there's, I, there's so many things I could say positive about Kevin and what he's done for me professionally and as a friend. He's a good friend. And, uh, you know, but come Sunday, we're just we focused on our own teams. And is uh, Rashad Hill definitely your starting left tackle, or with Christian Darrisaw back, would you consider there be competition now for that spot? Rashad, Rashad's our guy. Yep, good to have Christian back in practice. He's getting better. You know, you he's only had a few days, so we got to we got to build him up and do it do it the right way. And uh, I'm really pleased with his progression. Is there an element too of if, if you get to a point where where Christian's ready that you might not want to disrupt what you have going if the offense has been humming the way it is? Yeah, I think that that'd be. Uh, the discussion for down the line, you know, right now just focusing on today and, um, you know, Coach Rousher's getting getting Rashad ready and and uh, and Spurts giving him his his repetitions and just you know not trying to just throw it all at him at once. He's got, you know, he had zero practice, so he's got a lot of catching up to do, and he's doing a heck of a job um, with everything he can control. That these uh, two offensive philosophies are similar and it seems like around the league there's many teams that are sort of uh, becoming more influenced by the Shanahan Kubiak style. What is it about this offense that you think is sort of um, caught on and, and been so successful around the league? Uh, I think it's it's about the O-line, the run game and the running backs. O-line running backs uh, being able to run the football and that sets up everything for your offense. So I think we've had a, uh, you know, I, I give all the credit to, uh, you know, to Phil Rauscher and Ben and, and Rick Dennison and those guys laying a solid foundation where we have something, we have an identity where we can run the football. And if you can do that, and then it opens up a lot of other things. One of the staples of the offense has typically been a lot of play action, but there's been a lot less of that this year than there have been in previous years. Is there a particular reason or has it just been like, you know, these three weeks of specific game planning have asked us to go away from it or, or what is it? Yeah, I think Time will tell. Like you said, it's a three-game sample size. In the heat of the battle, we're just trying to, you know, throw out our best plays that we think our guys have the best chance to execute. So uh, we'll see what we what our true identity is at the end of the season. But right now, it's just on focus on things that that we do well to help us go win games. What do you think you'll be emphasizing during those re that red zone period on Friday? Just kind of with some of the drives that stalled the last game. 
Yeah, it's a major point of emphasis. Major point of emphasis. Got to got to finish with uh, finish with touchdowns and you know red zone third downs are always key. Coach Zimmer stresses that to us all the time. So practicing the red zone third downs is important, and uh, you know it's it's also important that you don't have to. You can also score from death too. So that's always important to stress to the guys that hey, you know you don't got to sit there and go on 15 play drives. You want to you want to get those yards after the catch, get that yards after contact as a halfback in order to to score from depth. Was the, I guess, like the byproduct of the game last week, there weren't as many deep shots. I mean, was that just because of the run game, other factors? Was that part of the game plan going in? What, did, what do you think? No, I think uh, I, I couldn't say. It's just the flow of the game and calling what the defense was giving us. And uh, you certainly always have your have your downfield plays that you like, but I'm just, you know, just the way Seattle was playing us, we were sticking with uh, some other things like screens. Last couple for Coach. What are your thoughts just at a field map to catch touchdowns? I mean, uh, Kirk, uh, Kirk Cousins yesterday was saying he told him a couple weeks ago he's like Chris Carter in that regard. I mean, 14 last year, four this year. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a really good question. And we have a lot of guys that can score in the red zone. I, I think it just goes back to Adam being an all-around, you know, well-rounded football player. He uh, He's great at a lot of different things. And when you get down to the red zone, you're looking for your most, you know, detailed, detail-oriented guy. And he's one of those guys where the windows get smaller. So you need to know exactly where he's going to be. And you know where Adam's going to be. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. But uh, I know that Justin is obviously a major red zone threat. Tyler Conklin giving the ball to our backs. Um, so we have a lot, a lot of different people that can make plays down there. You mentioned detail in the red zone. Is, is it just him winning off of his release, or what, what kinds of things does he do well as far as detail in the red zone? Uh, yeah, he beats man coverage, definitely. He beats man coverage. He's, uh, he's uh, really disciplined with his depths and his steps and his routes. And uh, I think another thing about Adam is that he, he really blocks really hard in the run game. So when you have play actions, you know, the, the DB's got to – doesn't know if it's run or pass. And when you give those play action passes, it makes it easier to get them open. So I think because he strains in the run game, it opens up other opportunities in the pass game.